Our next speaker is a wonderful man, a man of God, great father, an author of an amazing book. Help me introduce David Harris Jr. What's up, Baltimore? How's everybody doing in the house today? Are you guys excited to be here or what? Do you realize that you are a part of history? Every single one of you are a part of history today. Nothing like this has ever taken place inside this country before. The unity that you all came to this place with in your heart is something that's unprecedented. And can I say that the United States of America will never be the same because of you. I'm so thankful for Candace Owens, the visionary that she is. Somebody that said, you know what? People need to stop talking about the problems and actually do something about it. Do you guys know there's protesters outside? You saw them? I was standing right there in the middle of those protesters. And you know what? The one thing I didn't hear any of them say? They weren't talking about any solutions. Why do protesters never talk about solutions? And why do they not want to answer any questions? Because they don't know the answers. So how are we going to get anywhere as a people, as a country, if we're not li willing to listen to one another? You guys are willing to listen to one another. You guys are some of the most multicultural, multifaceted, from different backgrounds, that I've ever seen in my life. And that spans all across the country. I speak all across the country. I meet so many amazing people. And one thing that stands out to me is their love for God. I'm so thankful for Shannon and her message today. There's a thread that unites every single one of us. It's an understanding and an appreciation for God, a belief in him and his love for us. And the fact that we weren't born in this time and in this era by accident. If you don't believe in God, then maybe you just think it's an accident that you're here. Maybe it's just, well, I, I, this is just the time I'm in. No, you were born for this time, for this era, for this very hour to be in the United States of America. You realize you could have been born anywhere in the world? You had the privilege of being born in the greatest country to ever exist at the greatest time. You know, my first video that went crazy was right after the third debate between Trump and Hillary. When I had a couple thousand friends on Facebook, I didn't have a Facebook page, I didn't know Candace Owens, I didn't know Brandon Tatum, I didn't know Rob Smith, I didn't know Larry Henry King face one down here. I didn't know, and you know what? I wasn't really paying attention too much I had came out in opposition against Barack Hussein Obama. I had came out very publicly about that. You know the number one reason? His stance on abortion. His stance on partial birth abortion. He even voted against the bill that would have given life resuscitation to babies that had survived attempted murder. And this man became the president of the United States. And what did he do for the black community? Nothing. What did he do for his own city of Chicago? Nothing. What did he do for Christians? Nothing. And yet, America elected him twice. And yet there are still people that want to say America's racist? Are you kidding me? How in the world can a country elect a black man as president and yet you still want to say, oh, the country's racist? It doesn't make any sense. You got to choose what you're going to believe. Unfortunately, so many people, and this is the current state of the Democrat Party and the mainstream media who are working in tandem. You got to understand the mainstream media is the propaganda arm of the Democrat Party. The exact same way that KKK was the, mili the militia arm of the Democrat Party. It's the same thing. I can always tell 
what somebody's paying attention to, who they're investing their mind in, and what they're watching and where they're getting their information from, from what kind of sp- uh, uh, stats they want to spout back to me. So many people are only listening to one side. I listen to CNN. I listen to MSNBC. Because I want to know what the heck they're talking about that's so crazy. It's got all these people all stirred up talking about all this nonsense. It is a non-stop 90 plus percent of the time they are spouting nothing but hatred, division, doing nothing but trying to stir up emotional responses in Americans, especially the black community, that don't have their own sound understanding. They are manipulating us in order to control us, in order to dominate us. You know what the KKK's agenda was? Manipulate, dominate, and control by any means necessary. What is the mainstream media doing? Manipulate, dominate, and control the people. That's why we call it the Democrat plantation. It's a plantation of the mind. It's one of the hardest things to change a person's mind when they have their mind made up. That's control. That's why the mainstream media tries so hard. And you got to give them credit. They're obviously doing a good job because there's a whole lot of people that know a lot of non-facts but feel really emotionally about, about it. They think they know. Oh, you can't tell me nothing. I was outside. And these protesters are spouting off all this nonsense, anti-Blexit this, expletive Candace Owens, F this, F. I'm like, you know what, I'm just trying to ask you a question. Do you know that Candace actually said, you know what, let them come inside. Let them come inside. So I went out there with the intention of saying, hey, Do you guys want to come inside and actually listen to what these people have to say? How do you think that went? They don't even want to hear it. They are so emotionally stirred up with no facts that it cuts them off from even being open to hearing the other side. You know what that is? It's immaturity. And yeah, I heard somebody say it. It's slavery. But it's, it's a mental slavery, but it's an immaturity because grown folks, adults, even young teenagers can learn to sit and have a dialogue with somebody that they don't agree with so that they can try to find out what the other person actually means. <laughs> Abraham Lincoln, the Republican that freed the slaves, said, when I begin to reason with a man... I spend two-thirds of my time thinking about what he's trying to say to me. I'll tell you, this is an issue in communication, period. And being married for 25 years to my high school sweetheart, I can tell you, most arguments and disagreements would not take place if the person that was listening was actually listening. So many of us, I'm, I'm guilty too, I've done this plenty, I had to work real hard to make sure I didn't do this. So many of us, when we're in a dialogue, we're so excited to have something to say in return, and we're thinking about what we're going to say in return, that we're not even listening to the person. That's a problem. But I'll tell you, while I think it's a problem, period, it's definitely a bigger problem for those that think they're right while they're sitting on that plantation mindset. They are not willing to listen to anybody else. So I gotta give it up to you guys. How many of you guys in here have shared somebody that's on this stage's videos or somebody that's a conservative voice? How many of you guys have shared something? See, you guys are the army. You guys are the real army. Give yourselves an applause, really. Give yourselves an applause, thank you so much. You guys are the real army because none of us would would be up here. We wouldn't have the voices that we do. We wouldn't have the ability to reach other people if you weren't sharing. 
And in the audience and people watching this as well, voices like yours are also going to start to pop up because you know why? We can't do this ourselves. It's not about us. It's about the message. And you know what the message is? We are in the most pivotal time in our country's history. I truly believe that. I thought 2016 was the most pivotal, and I believe that it was at that time. But we're not there now. Now we have political candidates that want to become the next president of our United States that are openly calling for socialism. Are you kidding me? And they, and they don't get booze. I wish they got booze. I really do. They don't get booze. They get applauded. That tells me. That tells me there's a whole lot of people that are misled in our country. And how are they going to hear a message that even plants a seed to change their mind? How? That's right. From you. From you, from your own voice, and from you sharing other voices of truth, of knowledge, and of impact. We've got to do this together. We've got to come together as a nation, as a country. And for my black brothers and sisters out there, we've got to come together as a people. I watched something so amazing on my way to Baltimore today. Candace Owens. I mean, here, here's, here's what's really taking place in our country. Our sister, Queen Visionary B herself, Candace Owens, was invited by Sean P. Diddy Combs to speak at a revolt conference that was all black folks. All black folks. In Atlanta. You know who else was there? T.I. was there. Tip was there. You know who else was there? Katrina Pearson was there. Killer Mike was there. But for Sean P. Diddy Combs to invite Candace Owens and Katrina Pearson to an all-black gathering in Atlanta, folks, something is shifting. And it's because of you and your ability and your desire to share the truth that we share. Because you share, and videos go viral, the message goes viral. When the message goes crazy, people see it. For P. Diddy to have Candace and Katrina on the stage, and it was an hour and a half, and Candace held her own, and she was in a room full of wolves. They were not giving her any love. Thank God for Killer Mike on the stage with her, on the panel that actually said, hold on a minute, y'all need to shut up and let her actually talk and finish what she's trying to say. He would say one thing, and because he's accepted in the black community, it would be received completely different than when Candace said the exact same thing. That is truly a disgusting and despicable thing for especially our own black community to hate our own black community so much just because of their political affiliations. I posted a video yesterday on my Instagram. If you're not following me, David J. Harris Jr., Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook. I, I posted a video of a uh, very graphic, very, very disturbing video. I was really upset. It was about eight to ten black guys in Minneapolis that were teeing off on one white guy. Any, anybody here see that video? Disgusting. Absolutely disgusting to see a gang of people. And the guy initially in the beginning was just sitting there next to him. It looked like one of them tried to take his phone, and when he tried to say that's not going to happen, they all ganged up on him. I believe that the reason that that kind of hatred and violence is brewing in the black community is because of what Barack Obama started when he was in office and the mainstream media continues to push that he's a racist. Donald Trump is not a racist. 
He's disavowed white supremacy. He's disavowed white nationalism. He's disavowed the David Duke and the KKK, I don't know how many times, at least over 20 times. And can you believe that T.I. had the audacity and the ignorance, T.I., I hope you're watching, because it was really ignorant, for him to say that Donald Trump has never disavowed white nationalism or the KKK. T.I., a very well-respected brother in the hip-hop community, out of pure ignorance, said to an entire room of black folks and obviously the hundreds of thousands that were going to watch it later, something that is absolutely not true. Something that if he took his time and actually did his own research and used a little thing called YouTube, T.I., you'd find out that Donald Trump has disavowed them over and over and over and over again. What that proves is that he's being misled just like every single other person that's watching the mainstream media. And he's so emotionally wrapped up in thinking that he's right that he's unwilling to even look at any of the positive things that Donald Trump and his administration's done. Can I tell you something? Donald Trump is not a racist. You know who was? Lyndon Baines Johnson. Can I tell you what? If Lyndon Baines Johnson was in the White House right now as the president, and he was passing prison reform, which was getting blacks out of prison by the thousands, reuniting them with their families, I would say, that's amazing. That's a great thing that he's done. If Lyndon Baines Johnson said, come to the White House so we can talk about how we can help the black community, I'd say, let's go see what we can do. You know who else did that? Martin Luther King Jr. He met with them because he said, you know what, while I know what you are, I also understand the power that you hold. And if you are willing to do something that could have a positive impact on my community, I'm not going to cut you off. I'm at least going to go meet with you. I'm at least going to see what you have to say. And I'm going to see if maybe God is using me to get in the position of talking to you to talk some sense into you. Black folks don't want to do that today. Why don't black folks want to do that today? They're brainwashed. And to top it off, Donald Trump ain't Lyndon's ba Linda Baines Johnson. Donald Trump has done more for the African-American community, the Hispanic community, women in this country, and America as a whole than any past president that I know of. And he's going to win again in 2020 because we all know that he's the best president that we've had in our lifetime. He's going to win in 2020 because he stands for life. There's a rumbling. I spoke two weeks ago in D.C. at the Trump Tower, Dr. Lance Wallnau. He was the first one. Has anybody in here heard of the Cyrus effect that Trump, they, they, they likened Donald Trump to Cyrus? Out of Isaiah 45, Lance Wallnau, Dr. Lance Wallnau, good personal friend of mine. He was the first one to come out and actually make the correlation. It was about a year before Trump won the election and said, God spoke to him and said, Isaiah 45, look at Cyrus. He rebuilt the wall. How many of you guys know the wall's going up? He protected the Jewish community. In today's day and age, we need to protect the Jewish community and we need to protect the Christian community. Do you guys understand what's at stake if a Democrat was to win 2020? The em emotional turmoil that has reached a boiling, it's been boiling over and the mainstream media, I've got videos, I've got clips of different mainstream, of MSNBC, CNN, ABC, NBC, Donald Trump's a racist. He's a racist. He's a white nationalist. He, he, he's, uh, uh, he's anti this. He, all these lies they continue to spout about our president. Do you know what would happen if a Democrat won 2020? 
before, because before, I definitely believe a civil war would ensue, before that, they would target every single person that has supported the president because they're going to say we're all racists. Do I look like a racist? How can I be racist against myself? I love myself. God made me beautifully. You too. The Bible says you're beautifully and wonderfully made. We should love each other and ourselves. And I love myself. I am not racist against myself. And I support the President of the United States, Donald J. Trump. That is the power and the freedom that we have in this country. But if a Democrat was to win, they are pushing the ball so far down the road of socialism, folks, that the Americans that understand what's at stake, they're not giving up their guns. They're not giving them up. Yeah, try it. That's exactly what I hear all the time. You try to take my guns. Killer Mike even said that revolt. He's like, black folks need to be armed. So you're telling me that the administration is racist, cops are racist, and then you want my guns? Are you kidding me? And yet all of that is coming from the left. All of it's coming from the left. If a Democrat was to win in 2020, it would be a target on all of us that support the president, and I also believe it'd be a target on Christians. The event I spoke at in D.C., all Christian gathering, three, four hundred plus live streamed. There is a growing awareness that is uniting the Christian community of the ultimate fate of our nation if, De if Donald Trump was to not win in 2020. They are waking up. They are uniting. Are you uniting? Are you woke? Are you trying to wake up your community? Are you, are you afraid of the backlash of talking to a family member? Be honest. I love that. I really love that. That's because y'all follow Candace and you're part of Blexit. That's why. You don't know how many people I ask that to and they're, they shyly want to say, well, uh, I try. I wish I could wear my hat. You want to know how racist the president is? He shared a video of a black man wearing a MAGA Trump hat sitting in seat 1A first class on the airplane that waited for everybody to get behind him so he could turn his hat around and make sure they all saw it all the way home. Y'all see that video? Yeah, that was my video. The president's so racist he shared my video on his Instagram, on his Twitter, and his Facebook. Unfortunately, the black community says, well, he just does that because he's trying to act like he's not. So you're telling me that every single thing that the president has done that has a positive impact for the black community, historic, record low unemployment for the black community? <laughs> historic, low, un un uh, Hispanic unemployment? Over 50-year low unemployment for women? Are you kidding me? Oh, and he just does that because, no, 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 no. Eventually, they're going to have to stop making excuses for being so ignorant. They're going to have to stop making excuses because he's going to keep doing what he's doing, which is making America great for all of us. He doesn't care your color. You know, I shared this. This might come out in my second book. I don't know, but I shared this. I've met some racist folks. I've met racist people. You can tell. You can feel it. Even if, even if they're trying to be nice to you. I had to take my girlfriend, my, my semi-formal prom in high school, I had to have my, one of my good friends, a white guy, go to her house and pick her up and bring her to the dance because if her daddy knew she was seeing me, she wasn't going. I grew up in a predominantly white area. Most all the black folks there were my cousins. I'm serious. I have met racist folks. I remember one of the first times 
I didn't even know it was racism at, at first. I was on a water slide. I was at the very top. I was waiting to go down the slide. And I was maybe 12 years old, like maybe this tall. I sneezed. And like a good boy, like my mama taught me to, you say, excuse me. As soon as I said, excuse me, a taller white man looked down at me and said, there is no excuse for you. I felt that in my heart. I didn't know why at first. I felt that in my heart. I'm like, that was just so ugly and uncalled for, unnecessary. He don't even know me. I didn't have anybody with me that backed me up. I just had to deal with it. Later on, I told a friend of mine, and he said, I bet you he was racist. I said, that makes sense. I've met some racist folks. That's just one. I've met some racist folks. I've met the president of the United States, Donald J. Trump, three times. I have never felt anything but love and respect from that man when he shakes my hand. Each time I met him, I got to shake his hand. The last time, I got to take a selfie with him. I actually got a selfie video. I was like, I'm not just clipping this. I'm going to video the whole thing. I got a selfie video with the president. Not one time have I felt any type of ill intent, hatred, evil, which is racism, from that man. He stepped out of his private life, multi-billionaire life, to fight for you and for me. Because just like he told Oprah almost 30 years ago, if it gets so bad, if it gets so bad that I have to run, then I'll run. Where was T.I. and all these people calling him a racist when they were all going to his parties? Where was the mainstream media calling him a racist when they were talking about how amazing he was? The business mogul, Mr. Apprentice, Mr. Universe, all the things that he had. No, they weren't. It's when he chose to run on a platform that is against the propaganda arm of the Democrat Party. That's when it all happened. So I'm thankful for Blexit. I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful to be alive at this moment and time in history. Are you thankful to be alive at this moment and time in history? You are the ones that have the power to help make sure that Donald J. Trump stays elected, stays our president, gets reelected, and continues to give us another four years. You are the ones. I believe God appointed him chose him, but we're the ones that have to put in the work. Are you ready to put in the work? Are you ready to put in the work? Then together we're going to keep America great. David J. Harris Jr., God bless you.